How's it going, guys? So the shackles of the Wombat have been released and we are out. Just a little weekend trip for you. We're heading towards Bedford. I think that's probably about a, an eight hour journey at the very least. We are going for an hour. All right, so yeah, nowhere near bloody Bedford. But Becca is back from her survival course and she's looking to start fire. So we're off on a stealth camp to find the perfect location, off grid. Just gonna drift along here until we find a lovely little spot that we can uh, camp up for for the night and start a huge bloody fire. She's absolutely itching to put those newfound skills to use. And, and this is a good little taster of what it's gonna be like, I think, when we're actually gonna be full-time cruisers. So yeah, a couple of hours up here. What do you reckon, a few hours? Yeah, I think so. And then just sort of find somewhere funky to, to moor up and let the party begin. It's just nice that we've got that little spot at the top of the marina now. We can just nip out for a few hours and enjoy the boat to how it should be in the rain. A lovely British climber. <laughs> you know it's going to rain, don't you? At some point it's going to start thundering down. So, watch out. Yeah, we know it's going to be absolutely terrible weather on this little crusade today, but Crowbot is prepared. Here we go. The storms have been brewing. Extreme narrow boating. Yeah, uh, Becca just needed to go to the toilet quickly. But it's not been the first time that we've been out in bad weather. This narrow boat life sort of throws everything and anything at you at the weirdest of times. And, and we're ready for it. It's quite fun, really, especially if you need the toilet. Up, guys. Yeah, really starting to pick up now, guys. Here we go. Yeah, she wanted to go on the cruise in the rain. This is what happens, isn't it? I get lumbered outside with it. <laughs> Look where she is. Clever little bugger, isn't she? What was I saying about it being fun? Somewhere in the distance I can hear the faint whistling noise of a kettle because it's tea time. I'm coming! I thought since he's out there, I <laughs> bless him, um, fighting against the rain, I'd make him a little cup of tea and I might even dig out a little biscuit as well if we've got any lurking in the cupboards. And only a brew will do. Tell us guys, like how do you like your tea? Because it is such a particular thing. Milky, non-milky, mega strong, like Chris has liked his. I like mine kind of weaker really. Ooh, it's getting a bit frosty. What a lovely day. Use that weird phallic looking instrument on the side of the boat, that is just the aerial. Don't know about you guys, but I can't see that biscuit she went on about, eh? Cheers. So while Chris has taken one for the team and manning the helm whilst it's all soggy outside, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a view of what it's like to travel around looking at all the different views you get and experiences you get from the different windows in the boat. So let's go have a little look. So here's our little lovely kitchen window. It's amazing how different spaces kind of feel so different in different circumstances. Different, different, different. But it's really lovely. I mean, what's better than doing your dishes and having this as your view? It's beautiful really, isn't it? Look at that. And on to our little hatchy hatchies. Again, you can like fully immerse yourself outside and inside all at the same time. Every little space of the boat just feels that little bit different. It's hard to explain, but it's lovely. It's that gorgeous time of year as well where all the trees are changing colour, so everything just looks really autumnal and yummy. Still waiting for me biscuit. Better not drop the camera, God, can you imagine? Let's head up the front to the quiet zone. 
going, keeping us nice and toasty in here. Also going to be the drying room for Chris Blessing when he comes in. Room of serenity. So we're currently on the River Grey Ooze, guys, and we are heading towards our first lock of the day. Roxton Lock. And we are on the Anglian Waterways, for those that don't know. Very, very posh, guys. We are very snobby. And this is like one of the best places to be. Right on the bow of the boat. Remember that scene from Titanic? Oh yeah, we all remember that. Okay, so probably about an hour into our journey now. Lovely little marina on the right here. It's one of these sort of marinas where it's just bung your boat on the side and pay us a hundred pound a month. <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. They look awesome actually because you get your own little bit of land. Probably a lot better than being on uh, an expensive marina like our ones. But oh God, I'm throwing everyone on the bus here, aren't I? <laughs> I love our marina too, but it is expensive. Again, Crowbot, do not mess around. We are very posh and very snobby. We're not posh at all, guys. We're actually pretty poor at the moment. Our savings are running out and we haven't even started our cruise yet. But we'll get there. It's, it's just good to have a marina whilst you're doing all this DIY work. The Thamesford Bridges, guys. Quick little Google search for you. 1820. And if you are a fellow narrowboater or someone curious about narrowboating or just someone that wants to maybe become a narrowboater. Um, forgotten what I was gonna say now. These old bridges never become boring. I love them. And I love them that much that I'm gonna fast forward here. <laughs> yeah, we'll get past this little bit. We don't wanna bore anyone, eh? And I think it was a narrowboat Will. Check him out, a lovely, lovely chap that came to see us. The king of narrowboat vlogs. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel, guys. He's amazing. It's probably the most honest uh, solo narrowboating channel out there. So we'd be the most honest uh, duo one, obviously, wouldn't we? Because all narrowboat life is exactly like ours. <laughs> Joke there. Anyway, in one of his recent episodes, he said, supposedly these lifeboats are meant to be unsinkable. But when one tried going over the wash, it actually sunk. So. So, yeah, not that unsinkable. But they're still pretty cool, aren't they? I'd have one. Just have to fit a massive snorkel on it. Right, coming into Roxton Lock, and we took this on the far left, because you can just see it there in the distance. And, yeah, we may have got a little bit stuck. So, reverse the vessel. And uh, retry, I suppose. That's it, yeah, nice and slow. Not <laughs> Here we go. We got stuck. We haven't even made it into the bloody lock yet. It's a bit where I fall in. But if it's on film, it's worth it, isn't it? These cratch covers get right in the way. And I think we were coming in pretty quick here, actually. starting to rain again so just in time to uh, moor up quickly in the spot you're not meant to moor up and uh, discuss a solution. So we've just got to Roxton Lock, we're going to hole up here on the landing strip for a minute or two because it's just started peeing down again and uh, we don't really want to get really um, soggy, it's quiet enough that I think we'll be alright for a few minutes. So what's happening? Well I'm eating chickpeas. <laughs> I mean, we were planning on sort of doing a, a couple of hours upstream, find a like, nice little sort of area in the woodland where you could just find something to ignite. Bex wants to burn stuff. We were sort of thinking maybe it would be best to turn around because we found a nice little area that we went, shot past about an hour ago, which was ideal really, weren't it? Like in the woods, where you could get a little fire going. And the weather isn't the nicest. Today. And we haven't got loads of fuel either. That's what I'm. Oh, is that what you're thinking? Chris just wants a beer. <laughs> I do want to get the party started. Get you guys in on this fireball business. It's a cinnamon whiskey and you mix it with clouded apple juice and it is. isn't it? Yeah, but you have to pronounce it fireball. 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 Okay. 
Here we go, we'll turn it around. Plenty of room here. Should be able to swing it around without the weir eating us up. Yeah, bit of a funny turn in here because there's a massive weir here. I'd never tried turning a boat around a weir area. Is, is the weir going to suck us in over here? Is it going to push us out when the boat's sideways? It's quite a big sort of area to manoeuvre in, but is there going to be some sort of sucking from the crazy weir? There's this lump of wood here sticking out as well, where I've got to try and not knock into, which I, I sort of did knock into and it just sort of bounced. Lo and behold, no reason to panic because it was just exactly the same as uh, any normal sort of turning point, I think. I don't really know what happens with all this. Does the boat go mad and, you know? There we go. Crowbot perfect. And uh, it, yeah, the boat started picking up quite a bit of speed coming down off this now. It's like sort of a weir tide just forcing you along. But okay, I don't even know if you're going to see it, to be honest. But it was going quick. We're going rapid here because of the weir. And yeah, now, now we're going to go all the way back and film the whole journey back for you guys. <laughs> what do you reckon? Well, just in case you didn't see it like the first time round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna to squeeze another vlog out of it. Lots of exciting, entertaining footage. We're going all the way back. And even though we were going back part of the way, we were about to be hit with uh, Becca's biggest test today. Lovely little bit of uh, torrential rain, Becca's dosage. But first, look at this. This is a cruiser and it's completely sunk. That's this little head poking out. Sad, isn't it? I do love a sunken wreckage, but that is pushing it. That, that isn't fun. Right, let's show Bex how to make a real cup of tea. Let's get the girl a nice cup of tea, eh? The last one she had got thrown off by a branch. Personalised cup, just for me. <laughs> And then the heavens opened, guys. It was Becca's turn. I mean, it's even, it's such a small little journey and there's no main goal of the journey apart from just finding somewhere to have a little, little cook up. This is so much fun. Especially while Becca's carting me around whilst it's raining outside. Highly recommended. Just remember to get a survey. <laughs> She's had far too many nuts for one day. What do you reckon? Bloody nut kiss! Quite cosy here, sitting in the bow under the new cratch covers while Bex is on the back in the rain. It is hammering it down now. Poor girl, she says she's all right. I wanted to take over. She seemed, she seemed happy at the back there. What do you reckon? Yeah, have a look out here, guys. <laughs> Poor girl. And just in time for our perfect little mooring spot where we can start a huge forest fire. Sorry, I meant just a little camping fire. Yeah, Becca went on this little survival course the other week and she learned all these little skills of how to forage and sort of just completely look after yourself in a survival situation. And she's itching to put those skills to test. I'm pretty sure trying to knock me off the boat is probably one of them. <laughs> where am I gonna go? Here we go, ease it in, I'm off. And check out this awesome little woodland area. This is absolutely perfect. And are the canals like this too, or is this more like a river thing, guys? Would love to know. So Bex is off foraging. We're gonna make a fire. Got the old plank. Pride of eating soaking, stealing. No, you only take dead stuff. Sounds sadistic. How are your new skills going? Good, thanks. Sorting me wood into sizes. So you got the small, you got the medium, well, that... and you got the large. Oh wow, she goes. The so... pentagram on the floor, ready. <laughs> Does look a bit like that. <laughs> so you get your bit of Tinder card. You love the old Tinder, don't you? Yeah, when you're looking for this on the internet, just know that it might not be the first thing that comes up, if you know what I'm saying. If this goes wrong, <laughs> you're not putting it in the video. What's that you got there? So this is my bushcraft knife. Is that legal? In certain situations. Draw it. Jesus. No, 
basically we've just made a nice space here, cleared all the leaf stuff away, made a platform sort of slightly cheating with some kindling we had on the boat. It just gives it a good starting point. Collected up loads of different size twigs to start with. So the rule of thumb when collecting wood for making fires is if it sounds like fire, then it's good for fire. So when you snap it, when you hear that, it sounds like when you're, you've got a nice roaring fire and it's crackling away, that's what you want to be listening for. Because this wood, although it might be a bit soggy around the edges, is really dry in the middle. It's not green wood. Get your bit of tinder card, open it up in the middle to reveal the fluffy stuff. And then just using your knife or something else. It's good if you've got like a little tree stump or something. You just want to ruffle up the fluffy stuff on the inside. So this is just one of those sort of emergency survival things on it. It's got a whistle, it's got a striker to make fire with and the cord as well for if you need this unravels so you can use it for different things. Do you want a lighter? No. Oi. Let that get going a bit. And some twiggage there. Now what you do, if you have these two like long branches, what you can do is you put it on and then if it's not taking too well, then it needs more oxygen, you can like use it to lift it up and down. Oh well. And how do you put it out when like it all goes wrong? Vatter! And then the more it takes, the more you move up your size of wood. <laughs> all that's missing now is the witch's hat. Kind of cauldron. <laughs> Need some children to burn. Oi, there it is. This stuff is amazing. You've got to try it, guys. Fireball. It's a cinnamon whiskey. It's literally the easiest sort of tasting cocktail you can make. It is awesome. Mmm, fireball. And you add clouded apple juice to it. Another sponsor we'd like to be endorsed by, not only just Titan, now we want to be endorsed by Fireball. Fireball whiskey. <laughs> See what it's you think? Fine. It's got cobweb in it. Oh, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Boat life. <laughs> it's so excited. I'm having the best time ever. Woo! We were just saying how much better it's going to taste because we're like in the wilderness and it's a uh, it's nearly like one up from actual normal camping because Becca's created the fire like all by herself out of like wilderness stuff. Oh, that's raw. <laughs> <laughs> Is it cooked? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it nice? Mmm. It does taste better. Mm. So tender. It does taste better. <laughs> I'm bringing the planking, girl. If you don't hurry up, 